speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love I am a noisy cone or clanging cymbal And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all Okay, um, for those who just entered, we'll start with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Dearest Jesus, I'd like to ask that you help us to put aside all the background worries and thoughts, noise of our hearts and mind now, so that we can fully be in your presence. You know the specific struggles that we are going through in our lives now. You also know that we try hard to live according to your words. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we get misled. Most times, we just lose contact with you. In this very moment of prayer, I pray that you help raise us with an openness to listen and dialogue with our hearts and spirit rather than body and minds. With this I give glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Okay, so hi again. Um, as Gary mentioned, my name is Paula. Yeah, so for those of you who have seen me around, i um, quite sick of my face already. <laughs> anyway, um, so as Gary mentioned, the missionaries are away on their retreat. Um, Gary kind of give away that they are not away away, but anyway, they cannot really go anywhere else. <laughs> but they are still here. So as they pray for us, um, we also later pray for them, lah, okay? And then we send them regards through our prayer. And uh, for those of you who are new, um, we're going to break the word soon. You can grab a pen to write some notes. Uh, otherwise, uh, just sit back and just uh, let the words uh, talk to you. And um, a recording of this will be going on and will be put on the website. Okay, so welcome to School of the Word again. We will continue with the fourth session of this uh, Celebrate Mission series with the sub-theme titled today, To Be Missionaries of Love, who draw close to people. So, does anyone know what's happening this Sunday? Okay, I wouldn't know myself either if I wasn't preparing for this. Anyway, 
um, it is um, su this Sunday will be World Mission Day, right? So that's why we have been praying with this year's theme. We cannot but speak about what we have seen and heard. And this can be found in Acts 4.20. So we started the series praying with how having a personal encounter with Jesus is fundamental to understanding our Christian mission. Jesus' call to the first disciples to come and you will see was this invitation to follow Jesus so that he can draw close and allow them to experience his very special love and compassion. A love, this love, that is the foundation of our mission and one that is greater than faith and hope, as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. We just sang it in the song just now. It is even capable of resurrecting dry bones in the valley, as we've heard two weeks ago. Last week, we understood that to follow Jesus and undertake this Christian mission is not merely a task, a duty, or even an assignment to check the box of being a good follower. St. Paul added that even if we have all the faith, gifts, capacity, and will, like the priest and the Levite, Levite in the passage of the Good Samaritan, but do not have love. I am nothing. Pope Francis shared in his message for this year's World Mission Sunday, saying, to be in a state of mission is a reflection of gratitude. Gratitude as one recalls that God first loved us and chose us before anything else. This state of mission begins with this spiritual acknowledgement that we are firstly receivers of God's love, even before we ask for it. Then, it is through this love that we pour our service of mission to share what we have received, seen, and heard with others. Exactly like how Jesus came to earth to show us his Father's unconditional love. In his apostolic exaltation, the Evangelii Gaudium, okay, I may not be pronouncing this right, but anyway, Pope Francis said this, Jesus himself is the model of evangelization, which brings us to the very heart of his people. Our Christian mission is this response to Jesus' love for us, rather than a rigid obedience to his commandments to follow like a ritual. Pope Francis continued that whenever we encounter another person in love, we learn something new about God. After all, we know that Jesus is the face of God, who is love. And he said, loving others is a spiritual force drawing us to union with God. He added that when we live out a spirituality of drawing nearer to others and seeking their welfare, our hearts are open wide to the Lord's greatest and most beautiful gifts. So tonight, we are called again to pray and reflect on Jesus as the model of evangelization. In these very trying times, when life seems ambiguous, let's turn to the one who had triumphed death and stood the test of time. When we pray later, let's allow that openness to ask Jesus honestly to help transform our uncertainties, our skepticism, pessimism, or the ism, anger, into this missionary state of thanksgiving that had guided the very first disciples right up to our own religious here in Singapore and the Verbum Day missionaries who made it accessible and possible for us to be gathered here right now so that we all can receive the word of God. So congrats, everyone. You've all been very good listening to that. Um, yeah. So again, let's ask Jesus to help us be filled with the spirit like these uh, missionaries, as Pope Francis said. Rather than a difficulty or an obstacle leading them to step back or close in on themselves, those experiences 
meaning God's love for them, the missionaries, impelled them to turn problems, conflicts, and difficulties into opportunities for mission. We will pray with the passage of uh, Mark 2, 13 to 17 later. Deepening into what it means to be in this state of mission and how we live out a spirituality of drawing close to others through love, through Jesus. In the passage, when you read later, we hear of Jesus walking along the sea and teaching all the crowd who came to him. This image sets the tone of being in this state of mission of love. The people we meet in our daily lives are like the waves of the sea sweeping into the paths of our lives. We cannot control this gravitational phenomenon. Neither can we choose to welcome only the gentle waves. Sometimes, rough and even dangerous waves like the tsunami will crash into our lives with attempts to sweep us out into the storm. From nature and history, we know that places along the sea and rivers are usually thriving with activities because it is usually the poor and working class people who have to risk the natural dangers because they depend on these natural resources for survival. Those who are well-to-do or have some privileges can afford to move further inland, away from these dangers. So this is the crux of the question right now. Do we still want to walk along this sea of uncertainties? Or do we choose to avoid it altogether and walk the safer inland road? The passage said that Jesus taught all who came to him, regardless of who they are in society. He chose to walk that path along the sea, where he can give his love to those most in need. He wasn't selective, and neither did he discriminate whether one was poor, rich, hungry, saintly, or a sinner. His self-giving love was meant for all of us, even the marginalized like Levi, the tax collector, who was considered a sinner then. And even though Jesus saw him still engaged in his business or profiteering from the people at the customs post, he still asked him to follow him. Next, we see him dining in Levi's house, surrounded by many who had been ostracized from society. From the passage, it sounded like it was a big group, for it said that there were many who followed him. So at this point, I thought, like, wow, this is a man whose love really has no boundaries or pride. His invitation to Levi to follow him can also attract so many others who are also yearning to receive love and feel belong. I mean, for me, I can still accept treating all who need compassion and love when the time arises, especially my line of job, but with a kind of a stoic determination, okay, must try to be good. But to intentionally reach out and even try to befriend, have a meal with those many people who still indulge in their sins is a whole new level for me to process. The topic of this uh, Christian mission it's not one where I readily feel at ease uh, thinking or even talking about. So yeah, I'm not very comfortable right now. But when I prayed and reflected more on this subconscious unease, it became quite clear how poorly I understood what Christian mission meant for me. My subconscious mind, conditioned by secular impressions and personal experiences of pushy preachings, and calls for conversion by some misguided Christian groups made me respond with a kind of hesitancy and a resentment for what I perceive as Christian mission. Even after I converted as a Catholic, I still hesitated to proclaim the word of God as freely as I should right now, as I said. Then I recalled a recent interview with one of my patients who had been suffering from some post-COVID symptoms. As she described how debilitating the after effects of the disease was, 
I asked how she was coping with life and the work that she really, really loves. She confessed that she actually felt guilty for not being able to return to work due to her illness. Any physical exertion will cause her to crash out, literally. But because of her guilt, she pushed herself harder to work. And this aggravated her illness and triggered this vicious cycle for the past one and a half years. As I dialogue with Jesus, it occurred to me that perhaps, just perhaps, I too was trapped in my own vicious cycle of misunderstanding the heart of my Christian mission. Very often, most of us strive to be good Catholics by attempting to fulfill a little more than the minimal obligations of the faith. We are kiasu, right? But when we face the actual task of this self-denying, self-giving act we saw in Jesus, to draw close and reach out to those whom we find challenging to connect, sometimes we subconsciously treat our mission just like any other task expected out of us from society. With the mind and the body, but no heart and spirit. As St. Paul says, without love, it becomes nothing. Sometimes, we also mistakenly harbor the failures and breed a certain bitterness. When the Pharisees question Jesus, why he eats with sinners? Why the association with them? Jesus responded, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, this is the point here. We have to reflect. Who are the sick ones? Who are the sinners and the righteous ones? So, I examined my own emotions as I prayed. And I find that my state of mission changes from gratitude to resentment. When I fail to see love as the heart of my mission, Instead of allowing Jesus to help me process the failures, I become the self-righteous Pharisee, defending my own actions and thinking, what a joke, Jesus was being sarcastic to me. Well, this obviously leads to nothing because I shut Jesus out and prevent him from helping me. Hence, mistaking our Christian mission as one that is a tireless chore, a burden to fight the endless waves of the sea. So, some of us rather keep a low profile to avoid all this emotional roller coaster, while some just trudge along, ticking the box of do's and don'ts of being a good follower. However, I found that when I start to recognize and accept my own failures and limitations of being unable to deny my ego, to reach out to those people whom I judge, Jesus' reply gives me comfort. Because I know that he has come precisely for sinners like me. In need of help to understand what life and love is through his ways and not mine. And I don't need to pretend that I know everything. And if I continue to open up more and offer my fragile heart to God, I realize that I'm actually that sick person who needs the physician Jesus to constantly heal my weak human nature. Pope Francis said this, We were created for fulfillment that can only be found in love. To be in this state of mission is to recognize that the love that we first received needs that constant involvement of Jesus to keep the fire burning at the heart of our mission. Pope Francis added that, Many who had persevered in this state of mission do so by learning to accept their own frailty and that of others so that they can promote fraternity and social friendship through God's love. And precisely this is the model of evangelization that Jesus wants to share with us. To be missionaries of love who draw close to people out of the love that we first receive rather than out of an obligation to fulfill a task. 
He added that what we have seen and heard, the mercy we have experienced, can thus become a point of reference and a source of credibility, enabling us to recover a shared passion for building a community of belonging and solidarity. That community of love is the one which gave hope to the many marginalized people, including myself, when he died with them. So, as we dedicate this month of October and the upcoming Mission Sunday to the many before us and to the ones right now actively helping us to collaborate with Jesus, okay, like the missionaries, let's pray that we can be like them to be missionary disciples of love, who are the opportunists to turn the challenges around us into a reason for mission. To allow Jesus to love and heal us first so that we can help him draw close to others through us. How we can maintain this fire in our state of mission goes back to how we maintain our relationship with him. So let's take the moment to really fuel up on this love by opening our vulnerable self to Jesus in prayers to understand what this mission means to us. As Pope Francis advised, we do so not from a sense of obligation, not as a burdensome duty, but as the result of a personal decision which brings us joy and gives meaning to our lives. So, We'll break for a 20-minute uh, silent prayer right now. You can switch off your cameras and stand by your, the computer. I will flash the passages uh, in a while. And uh, after that, we'll come back for um, communitarian prayer. <laughs> 